Prime Minister calls for moderation in celebrations. World leaders give Christmas messages. And Tubuans and Tabu, two icons of East New Britain culture. This is the National MTV News with Mary Bertullo. A very good evening. Thank you for joining us for the news on this Boxing Day. Prime Minister Peter O'Neill has applauded people around the country who have been celebrating Christmas in the right frame of mind. He also called on all citizens to take up the responsibility of keeping loved ones safe by taking away their car keys if they have had too much to drink. He said while Christmas and the New Year period was a time of relaxation, it was also a time to practice moderation insofar as alcohol is concerned. His main message to everyone, not to drink and drive. Two more Christmas messages from leaders around the world and Pope Francis has called on the world to pray for peace. The Pope held his Obi at Obi, where he addressed several issues facing the world, namely the long-standing Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Pope Francis urged people to see the defenseless baby Jesus in the children who suffer the most from war, migration and natural calamities caused by man today. Pope Francis, celebrating the fifth Christmas of his pontificate, said he had seen Jesus in the children he had met during his recent trip to Myanmar and Bangladesh, and he called for adequate protection of the dignity of minority groups in that region. On this festive day, let us ask the Lord for peace for Jerusalem and for all the Holy Land. Let us pray that the will to resume dialogue may prevail between the parties and that a negotiated solution can finally be reached, one that would allow the peaceful coexistence of two states within mutually agreed and internationally recognized borders. Well, here CNN Senior Vatican Analyst John Allen with more details on Christmas Mass at the Vatican. From the beginning, Pope Francis has thought of himself as a peace pope, someone who tries to bring healing to some of the world's most troubled conflict zones. And even on one of the holiest days of the Christmas calendar, of the, of the Christian calendar, which is Christmas Day, uh, the Pope did not give himself a day off. Uh, today, in his Christmas message, we heard him talk about the Middle East, uh, beginning with Jerusalem, where the president's controversial decision to really coat the American embassy has created fears of a wider conflict. The Pope prayed for peace in Jerusalem and reiterated the Vatican's long-standing support for a two-state solution. Then he mentioned Myanmar, a country where he visited in late November, calling for greater respect for minorities there, though pointedly, without using the word Rohingya, a word he also avoided while he was in the country, in an effort not to inflame opinion among hardline Buddhist nationals and end up making the situation worse. Uh, then he mentioned Venezuela, Ukraine, Iraq, Syria, Yemen. Uh, he talked about child soldiers uh, in uh, the scourge of human trafficking. I mean, in effect, what Pope Francis gave us on Christmas Day was a preview of his political and diplomatic to-do list for 2018. And United States President Donald Trump and First Lady Melania Trump have tweeted a festive video message wishing the Americans and the entire world a very Merry Christmas. The Trumps called for peace and goodwill. In the season of joy, we spend time with our families. We renew the bonds of love and goodwill between our citizens. And most importantly, we celebrate the miracle of Christmas. For Christians, we remember the story of Jesus, Mary and Joseph, that began more than 2,000 years ago. As the book of Isaiah tells us, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. This good news is the greatest Christmas gift of all, the reason for our joy and the true source of our hope. This Christmas season, we celebrate our blessings as Americans, and we pray for peace all over the world. On behalf of Melania, myself, Barron, and the entire Trump family, God bless you, God bless America, and have a very, very Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. 
Queen Elizabeth has praised the Duke of Edinburgh, her husband, Prince Philip, for their support during the 70 years of marriage. The 96-year-old prince has been at the Queen's side throughout her 65 years on the throne and has regularly grabbed the headlines with his off-colour comments. The Queen also highlighted the importance of a home and the sense of community in London and Manchester after the capital's devastating Grenfell Tower fire and the militant attacks in both cities. years ago today, a young woman spoke about the speed of technological change as she presented the first television broadcast of its kind. She described the moment as a landmark. Television has made it possible for many of you to see me in your homes on Christmas Day. My own family often gather round to watch television as they are at this moment. And that is how I imagine you now. Six decades on, the presenter has evolved somewhat, as has the technology she described. This Christmas, I think of London and Manchester, whose powerful identities shone through over the past 12 months in the face of appalling attacks. In Manchester, those targeted included children who had gone to see their favourite singer. A few days after the bombing, I had the privilege of meeting some of the young survivors and their parents. So you'd come specially for the concert, would you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The birthday present. What was it? Uh, Very right. Very scary. Very wicked. Mm. Yeah. Today, we celebrate Christmas which itself is sometimes described as a festival of the home. Families travel long distances to be together. Volunteers and charities, as well as many churches, arrange meals for the homeless and those who would otherwise be alone on Christmas Day. We remember the birth of Jesus Christ, whose only sanctuary was a stable in Bethlehem. He knew rejection, hardship, and persecution. And yet it is Jesus Christ's generous love and example which has inspired me through good times and bad. Whatever your own experience is this year, wherever and however you are watching, I wish you a peaceful and very happy Christmas. Back home and caving MP and Shadow Minister for Treasury and Finance, Ian Ling Staki, says the message of love must be shared by each one of us. While we celebrate Christmas, the local MP says on this occasion we must also remember those considered to live below the poverty line, children who do not have enough food and clean water and many unfortunate ones. While PNG has some alarming health indicators with domestic violence yet to be eradicated and women be respected like the mother of God's dear son born this Christmas. Mr. Ling Staki has called on all politicians and leaders to commit to serving our people better and do what is necessary to help ensure all children and their children will have more opportunities to enjoy the joys of Christmas. Here with National MTV News, we'll have more after these messages. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the news. Police in Manus have reported a quiet Christmas celebration. Provincial Police Commander Chief Inspector David Yapu says only minor drunk and disorderly cases were reported. 
He is pleased with the public conduct of people in Lorangau town and thanked the mobile squad from Tomaringa in supporting the Christmas security operations. Similar operations will be carried out tonight and will end in January 2018. They were full of smiles when they received their Christmas gifts thanks to Telecom Foundation. The gifts brought a renewed hope to the children at the Port Mosby General Hospital's pediatric ward. With the successful rollout of this initiative, Telecom Foundation is planning to set up donation boxes in all telecoms offices nationwide for toys and books. Telecom Foundation, through its programs, collected donations of books and toys for the second annual Children's Ward visit. The visit was a welcome for children at the Port Moresby General Hospital Children's Ward. And this is like a start for us. In fact, we did this last year um, and we continued this year. And Telecom staff and their family members and members of the Young Chamber of Commerce spread the joy of Christmas when they handed out hygiene packs from Colgate Palmolive, books and toys. The best thing about it is Telecom Romana is like our head office and probably we'll do that for our outstation office where we could set up the donation box so we can get some um, support coming from the regions also. Telecom Foundation Coordinator Yolanda Bafmatuk says plans are in place to take the donation boxes to all Telecom regional offices. Harry Agimbari, National and TV News. Community leaders of the Limki area and Leh have set up a crime watch program this Christmas to assist with policing. It's an initiative by local leaders and is supported by Leh police to minimize law and order issues at a community level. A makeshift shelter has been built in the Limki market area to house all those who will be taking part in the crime watch program. They will be set up here during the Christmas and New Year period. That's why I'm no plan model blong I. Where Mipla or Learn Order Committee's law here, Mipla initiative. The program was initiated to deal with law and order issues at the community level. Law and order chairman in the area, Brady Binge, said they will be involving youths in the crime watch for the next few weeks. Cooperation, but Mipla wants them all youth, blow me in, and neighbors blow me, must walk out so that Mipla can tackle him the law and order issue inside Limkin and Malabo. It is being supported by the lay police. It's part of a community policing initiative, which um, LA Metropolitan Police is Command is embarking on. It is to better enhance uh, the uh, restructured policing unit we already have. Staff officer to the Metropolitan Commander, Chief Inspector Timothy Pomoso, says programs like this one need more community support. Uh, policing is not a um, uh, job for the police only. We need all the support we can get, especially from the communities. You know, we have an increased number of settlements within Lay City. Meanwhile, there have been talks of setting up a police post in the area. Lucy Kopana, National MTV News, Lay. One man is dead after falling off from a moving vehicle in Port Mosby. The incident happened this afternoon at the Six Mile Roundabout. Eyewitnesses claim the vehicle was traveling at high speed and we warn footage might be disturbing. A man lost his life when he fell off a moving vehicle. The deceased was in his 30s. An eyewitness, Daniel Ila, saw what happened. Moving goes em, em be any more still, still low, only more back. So em first man em put down, he go down low, colta. Be any more still, still low, put down on top low em. Time all put on, yeah, all put on on top low em. Now I'm finished, no more. So this all still now. If you look at me, I all still on low side there. Em me blah be more now, put in low side now. Me blah put in place clear low em now. Now me blah, me blah wonder. All this all still here. Yeah. All kiss him low way. Six man, you know what place low? Salim still, still in the street, just low this side. How long is the highway? Is that still like all some kind? Hem all. Another witness told MTV News the vehicle was in full speed. I'm not coming easy. I'm speed now. I'm coming high speed. It's a long blast. What's that? Six million. What's that? Six million. What's that? Six million. Now it's time to station. Now it's time to station, sir. MTV visited the Six Mile Police Station. However, no information was released. Lillian Kinea. National MTV News. 
Recent issues surrounding the non-recognition of IBS or IBS University by the Higher Education Department have denied students their preferred choice for tertiary education. This has seen both students and their parents confused. Despite being left out in the national selections, IBS University has issued notices to all secondary schools in NCD and in the media that it's a recognized university and is enrolling students for the 2018 academic year. IBS University maintains that it was established with the NEC decision as of 1st December 2016 and by virtue of National Gazette notification on the 25th January 2017. We have to believe that the process has been followed because otherwise this particular notice won't come into the uh, Gazette. And we believe that when this has appeared in the Gazette, that means the public notice. In the past two weeks, the institution has received numerous inquiries from parents and students expressing concerns that students weren't selected to IBSU as their first choice, however, selected to other tertiary institutions. While this is causing confusion for students, it also puts them in a dilemma where they are forced to decide either settling for the institution allocated by DHIST or choose IBSU as initially chosen in the SLF and forgo their tests if they had been offered scholarship by the DHIS during national selections. DHIS Secretary Father Yang Shuba says parents should be responsible for their children's choices. Papua New Guineans should be aware that the institution which is not recognized by our system, if they put their children, they put their children on, on risk. 2017 grade 12 school leavers who had put IBS University as their first choice in their SLF are advised to visit IBS University Student Services for further clarification and enrollment for 2018. IBS University will be enrolling students at Saraga Campus six months starting tomorrow on the 27th of December 2017 through to 15th January 2018 for convenience of prospective students. Stacey Yalo, National MTV News. The tubuans and tabu shell money are items of great value in the traditional East New Britain society. They play significant roles in traditional gatherings such as sacred initiations. Up until today, the tubuan and tabu shell money revolves within the tubuan society and provides traditional interpretations of law, order and governance. Edwin Fidelis has this story from Kokopo. The East New Britain people have a long rich history of a traditional culture that resonates with the two bonds and the tabu shell money. The two items are of significant value in this part of Papua New Guinea. In the past, anyone who mistreated these items are expected to face instant death. Others will be demanded to pay compensation in the form of pigs and tabu shells to settle their grudges and sought forgiveness from the community. It represents a form of law and order through its presiding spirits that are believed to live behind these masks. Such rituals that involve the two items don't happen often in the province, but only on special occasions. Some may involve public viewing, while others are meant to be kept secret. Here at Navunaram village on the outskirts of Kokopo town, a ceremony has just begun to commemorate the anniversary of the first Christian missionaries who arrived in the area in the 1700s and were massacred. Thank you. Long. Walk boom la yo mia rakune na tawile o karabia tu pla karabia. O community blong rakune. Like Maki Mouse blog PPC chairman. Long de sala. A new new Paris to be. But we play remote Sunday. Uh like talk thank you la yo mia lo kata long. The two bones from two different villages came together to celebrate the occasion. The two bones led by their village elders are tracing back the roots used by the missionaries before they were massacred. The distribution of food and tabu shell money later followed. This was one of the few occasions that gave a glimpse into a tolai ritual that involved the two bonds and the traditional cell money. While the practice may not appeal to many people in other parts of the country, the ceremony itself has religious and political meanings to the East Newbiton people. Long before the establishment of modernized government systems, 
They were Tubuans and Tabu Shalmani. They were the government. They were the authority in the villages. Even there is a government today, the Tubuans and the Shalmani still remain a significant form of authority that continue to exist amongst these Nubitan people. Edwin Fidelis, National MTV News, Kokopo. The PNG Teachers Savings and Loan Society will continue to look for opportunities to add value to its members. Earlier this month, TISA realized another milestone with members of the Police and State Savings and Loan Society agreeing to an acquisition proposal put forward by TISA, believed to be valued at around 17 million kina. At a special AGM, members of the Police and State Savings and Loan Society agreed to TISA's proposal, effectively having its 6,000 active members now join TISA. The specific details of this acquisition will be made known in the coming weeks. However, this reinforces TISA's position as the leading savings and loan society in the country with a combined portfolio valued at over 600 million kina. TISA chairman Gabriel Tai says these developments are a catalyst for more positive development in the years ahead. My board of directors standing here and the management, uh, we wish all our 50,000 members in Papua New Guinea very Merry Christmas and Happy Prosperous 2018 to you all. The Angore people of Hela paid 100,000 kina in cash, 100 pigs, 19 goats and a cassowary as part of their compensation to the family of the late Mason Philip from Utipia village, Porama, in Southern Highlands province. Late Philip was killed in a vehicle accident along the Imendi Tari Highway. The compensation presentation was made before Hela provincial police commander, Michael Welly, Hela Peace Mediation Chairman Matthew Mapiria and other leaders. Mr. Malek's Ao, who represented the Angora people, apologized to ExxonMobil PNG, Trans Wonderland Limited, and the national and provincial governments and the general public at large for the inconvenience caused by their roadblocks. Here with National MTV News Stories making headlines overseas when we come back. Stay tuned. Welcome back to National MTV News. Different people may have different views about Christmas, but biblical teachings tell us it's a solemnity celebrating the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. While some countries restrict Christmas celebrations, this did not stop Christians from celebrating the nativity. We now look at Christmas celebrations from around the world. Hundreds of Catholic followers attended a Christmas Mass in Beijing amid reported restrictions on the Christmas celebration. I've been a Catholic since I was born. Every year our family celebrates this joyful Catholic ceremony. Every year we treat Christmas as a very grand occasion. The Postona cave in Slovenia states its traditional living nativity, creating the magic of Christmas in a nature-made setting, one of the country's top tourist attractions. The children really enjoyed it, especially riding the cave train and all these lights. In Indonesia, more security personnel were deployed with thousands of Muslim security volunteers to also help keep watch over Christmas events. So far, we still have had no information of potential terror attacks through our intelligence network or through our observations. But in our experience, we know it is difficult to monitor such things as groups use secret communication processes and also lone wolves for planning attacks. And still in Indonesia and the Bali Island Resort has started to welcome back its visitors to enjoy the long Christmas and upcoming New Year holiday season. That's after suffering from cancellations and tourists leaving Bali because of the eruption of Mount Agun in late November. Uh, and for Christmas, um, we're doing a family Christmas. Uh, we've got all the kids and the wife and their family with more nephews and nieces here as well. And yeah, hopefully we'll just have a nice relaxing Christmas. On visitors has increased up to 11,000. The normal average number of visitors to Bali is 15,000. So it's almost 70%.
In Pakistan, hundreds of Christians in the port city of Karachi attended the Christmas Mass amid tight security. A week after nine people were killed and more than 56 injured when four attackers broke into a church in the southwestern city, which was packed with more than 400 worshippers. We are not frightened and we are celebrating Christmas without any worries. We have the full support of the authorities who have taken all measures for our security. We will not be cowed down by terrorists. In Liberia, Christmas has been disturbed by the crucial presidential elections on this Boxing Day. Bishop George Harris led a muted Christmas service at the Pentecostal Philadelphia Central Church in Monrovia's Congo town. Christmas Day, looking forward to merrymaking. Then uh, uh, the day after it, you're looking forward to a sober day where sober actions are taken. So it's a little bit uh, confusing and disturbing. So some people are deciding whether to go full blast on Christmas Day or to be uh, to maintain a sanity for the next day. So you have that kind of thing happening. In Florida, the ride of Christmas magic where surfers dressed up as Santa take part in the annual event. Surfing centers raise money for a cancer charity as well as funds to support the Florida Surf Museum, which aims to preserve the history and culture of Florida surfing. Dozens of people dressed in Christmas costumes trans the cold temperatures in a traditional swimming session in Berlin's lake. Last week was cold. Well, it was to be felt in the ties, but we do it anyway. And on the outskirts of Washington, D.C., in an annual traditional that dates back to 1986, Santa and his elves donned their water skis and zipped up and down the Alexandria waterfront. It was pretty amazing, so it's just the fun to be outside with all the people and hanging out and enjoying the, the cold weather all together, so it was pretty nice. Very, very busy. <laughs> and somehow he managed to come down here, I don't know how. But. In Belarus, some of the Santa Clauses drew beautifully decorated tractors. Belarusians national produce what they used in various celebrations in the country. I want even more wonders, so we are waiting for a miracle. Fabian Hacklitz, National TV News. Boxing Day bargain hunters in Australia are being urged to spend within their means to avoid high credit bills. The big department stores open their doors before dawn with shoppers expected to collectively spend more than $2 billion. It has been a pretty tough year for retailers and they'll be hoping that months of preparation today pays off with what is expected to be the biggest shopping day of the year. Projections suggest that more than $2.3 billion will surge through checkouts nationally and it certainly started early. In Sydney, doors opened at David Jones at 5 o'clock in the morning. Some shoppers had been waiting since 10.30 the previous night. It's just the thrill, the adrenaline rush, you know, running in with all the people. Um, you just feel that need to, like, ready to run, ready to shop, you know, just grab, grab, grab. Hopefully, you know, they have my sizes and everything and I get all the good deals. This is like a bucket list. Tick the bucket list, 
put a stick on it and do it. In other cities it was a little more low key, but certainly there's high expectations. David Jones thinks they'll sell more than one million men's business shirts, as well as 45,000 gadgets and 150,000 sets of Lego. Other popular items of course include Manchester and handbags. And while many shoppers were there to snare a bargain, for some it was just tradition. It's a 30 year tradition for us in terms of coming to the Boxing Day sales. So we have breakfast up to here and we'll come back to David Jones and have a look around. I haven't got anything in particular that I want to purchase. I just thought we'd just go in and have a look like we always do and just see what we come across. If you are going to go out and battle the Boxing Day crowds, patience will be required as car parks and queues will be extensive. There will be lots of crowds as the day gets going. Um, be pleasant, everybody will get served. There's no need to rush or push. The other option that shoppers have is to go online because most Boxing Day sale items are also listed on retailer websites. American actress Megan Merkle drew a crowd at the UK's St Mary Magdalene's Church on Christmas Day. She attended church services with her fiancé, Prince Harry, and the royal family. Prince Harry and Megan smiled as they chatted with a woman in a wheelchair who had waited for them outside the church. Spending your first Christmas with your future in-laws is a daunting prospect for anyone. And for Meghan Markle, not only was it a British Christmas, but it was also a royal British Christmas with all the protocols, trappings and things that go along with that. It was also a first for the royal family this year, inviting someone into their fold who wasn't married. It's the first time for the Queen at her Sandringham estate in Norfolk. Now, the royal family celebrates Christmas like many families in the UK. They would have had a nice country walk, a trip to church and a big turkey roast lunch, uh, much like Thanksgiving. And then in the afternoon, like millions of families all around the world, they'd have sat down to watch the Queen's speech. Now this year, the Queen looked back at what has been a very difficult year for the UK. Terror attacks in Manchester and London, and of course the terrible fire at Grenfell Tower. Our thoughts and prayers are with all those who died and those who lost so much. And we are indebted to members of the emergency services who risked their own lives this past year saving others. She also looked ahead to 2018, which will be a very busy year for Britain, let alone the royal family, with a royal baby on the way in April for the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, and then the royal wedding in May. Despite Puerto Rico's island still without water and power after the storm in September, one centre is still trying to make the most of the holiday season and make sure children who lost everything in the storm are not forgotten. For Santa. Merry Christmas! This Christmas Feliz just Dali. hasn't been the same this year. The devastation in Puerto Rico was at another level. For many, the magic of Christmas has been overshadowed by the daily struggles of life after Hurricane Maria. A kid yesterday asked me to bring back his house the way it was before Maria. As he's done for the past five years, this Santa is gathering his elves to make sure the children of Puerto Rico know Santa is still watching. I'm going on, on, on my sleigh, my personal sleigh, and uh, even though Maria banged it up a bit. This year, Maria has forced some of the same kids he visited last year to move in with relatives in homes powered only by generators. This part over here was hit pretty bad also when Maria. Other children are in homes without water and Santa can relate. I don't, I don't have power, uh, still don't have water and still got to fix the roof to the house. <laughs> Maria destroyed his home too. But when Santa visits these children, they forget, mm. even if just for a oh moment, my. about the challenges of the last few months, the concerns for the future. She says this year, because the children lost everything, they were concerned, um, not just about life, but also about Santa coming. But that's what makes this so special, that he did come this year. For this moment, six-year-old Alejandro forgets he doesn't get to spend Christmas in his own home. He says this is what he put on his list for Santa to bring him. And he's just grateful he got it this year. And seven-year-old Jamel forgets he even doubted Santa finding him this year. Enough proof for at least a few families on the island to believe Santa <laughs> is real. St Kilda residents in Melbourne, Australia are furious after thousands of drunken youth left the foreshore looking like a rubbish dump. 
Police closed the roads to disperse the crowd and a man was hit during the chaos. Well, the clean-up effort is still continuing down here at St Kilda Beach after this wild, out-of-control party overnight. Police say more than 5,000 revellers converged on this strip of grassland right next to the St Kilda Beach for this party. Now, they have left one heck of a mess down here on this normally pristine stretch of foreshore. Cans, bottles and broken glass stretch for a couple of hundred metres. Now, council workers have been down here since around 4 o'clock this morning. Their team has certainly grown. They have trucks, a team of around 30 or so people picking up that rubbish. That very fine glass, though, has been embedded deep into the grass. This will be a very difficult clean-up operation. Now, we have spoken to some neighbours in the area. They say that this is an annual event and they now want council to step in. This is absolutely an environmental disaster. We're extremely disappointed. This is just unacceptable behaviour. It's made our beautiful foreshore a waste dump and seriously, this has been about the third or fourth year in a row. It's time council stood up to the mark and took some tough measures to ban alcohol and glass, particularly at this time of the year. Now, in addition to this wild party, police say a 27-year-old man was hit by a tram nearby. A 27-year-old woman actually had to be taken to hospital to have her stomach pumped. There are a number of fights and arrests down here and several injuries with people cutting their feet on broken glass. This cleanup effort will continue for much of the day and beachgoers are today warned to take precautions. You're with National MTV News. True Guy Sports is up next. Stay tuned for the details. Two Kai Sports. Welcome to Trukai Sports. Families and communities continue to celebrate the spirit of Christmas through sport. Tatana Village, home of PNG Rugby League star Kato Otio, gathered together on Boxing Day today and challenged each other in different sports. Otio says it's part of the community's annual Christmas celebrations aimed at uniting families in fun and, most importantly, to keep the youth out of trouble. Every year during the festive season, families at Tatana Village come together to commemorate Christmas through the spirit of dining together, exchanging gifts and sports. PNG Rugby League World Cup star Kato Otio, who recently signed with English Super League outfit Witness Vikings, was at his home village participating in the organized activity. We usually organize games and we play uh, volleyball, uh, netball, and some other games as well. But and mostly we play volleyball here. At age, it's just all about fun and uh, getting, uh, getting everyone together. Kato, who comes from a mixture of Tatana, Koyari and Autonomous Region of Bougainville, says the annual event is a way to bring families together to have fun and keep youths away from unwanted activities. The actual celebrations began yesterday after the children of the village cooked for the elders. Today's games continue from yesterday's feast and gift exchanges. The games will pick up again towards the new year where this time the elders will cook for the children. Otio says during this time of celebrations, youths, especially young men, tend to participate in unwanted activities. Just stay out of drugs. That's the, I think that's the main cause where they started drinking or like they do drugs and then they don't, they, don't, uh, they don't control their emotions and then those things kick in and then um, they get into like criminal activities and all that. So my, my advice is just stay out of drugs and you live a happy life. Stacy Yellow, National MTV Sports. The annual Sydney to Hobart yacht race kicked off earlier today. Blackjack is one of the early leaders in this race. A classic. The race record could be smashed by more than four hours thanks to a dream sailing weather forecast. The numbers suggest that, yeah, a race record is easily achievable for, I think, any of the maxi boats. So, um, you know, we'll just have to see. And there's always the, the unknown at the end of getting up the, you know, up the Derwent River and across the bottom there. Um, so it's always a little bit tricky, but the numbers suggest we're going to get to Tasman Island sort of 
you know, sort of around a bit after sunset on tomorrow. The finish could see a tight tussle between Super Maxis, Wild Oats 11, Blackjack, Comanche and Infotrack down the Derwent River. And we'll have more of Trukai Sports after these messages. Stay tuned. Trukai Sports. Welcome back to Trukai Sports. Wins Vikings bound Kato Otio is grateful for the opportunity to join the team. He will leave for preseason training early next year. The 23-year-old was impressive for the Kumuls during the Rugby League World Cup. and was bound to return to the Canberra Raiders, but then witness came knocking and he leaped at the opportunity to play in a top-grade team. He says playing in England will be tough as compared to playing in Australia. I think it's aggressive up in, uh, up in the UK and it's, 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 yeah, it's just aggressive. Like, um, um, NRA is more, 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 like, more technical and smart football. I think up there will be aggressive. So. We have the mentality in us, so it should be, should be okay, yeah. Otio is excited at the opportunity given and is glad fellow Kumul Wellington Albert will be joining him at their new club. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, he'll be there, so I think we, we're going to speak more pidgin than English, so yeah, it should be all right. <laughs> his family and friends have played an essential role in his success during his rugby league career. With his recent signing, Otio thanked all who have supported him since the start of his rugby league journey. All the family's been, been supportive like from the start till now, and they will always be, so I'm happy, I'm grateful for, for the support that they always give me. He's looking forward to the 2018 season with the Witness Vikings and is determined to do his best. Just looking forward to go over and over there and play, play good footy. Elijah Levet, National MTV Sports. And that's it for Trukai Sports. We go for a break. When we come back, the weather details for the next 24 hours. Trukai Sports. Trukai Sports. The weather details are proudly brought to you by Dulux Weather Shield. With doing with Dulux. A look at the weather forecast for the next 24 hours in the southern region, mostly fine in Alata, showers expected in Port Mosby, Daru Kerma and Popondetta. To the Mamasi region, mostly fine in Vanimo and Wiwek, a shower or two in Medang, Leh and Wau. To the New Guinea Islands region, mostly fine in Lorangao, Kegang, Kokopo, Rabaul, Kimbe and Buka. And in the Highlands region, Mount Hagen, Goroka, Kundiawa, Mendi and Wabeg, all these major centres can expect showers over the next 24 hours with morning fog. The weather details are proudly brought to you by Dulux Weather Shield. With doing with Dulux. And that's the news for today, Boxing Day, Tuesday the 26th of December 2017. From all of us here at MTV, pleasant viewing. Bye for now.